Welcome again to the uh, refresher course in biomedical content writing. Uh, so this is the session. Uh, this is the next session we are going to uh, talk about in biomedical content writing. And uh, this session is about grammar for biomedical writers. Although we all know that grammar is such a common thing that we assume that we know grammar and uh, we think that it is it is not important because we already have learned so much of grammar in our school time. But this is not the type of grammar we are going to discuss in this course. And this, this session, of course, you are going to find something new because writer's perspective, as I earlier also told uh, in my session that when you become writer out of your school or the academics, then your writing is not just to impress the reader and uh, to, to get the marks or the grades out of that. So you need to evaluate, you have to check your writing, whether your writing is effective as per the need of the readers or not. So studying the grammar from that angle is the main focus of this session, which we are going to discuss. We are not, it's not about the, uh, the definitions or the rules we are going to talk about. It's more of how the grammar impacts your writing, the content about the biomedical sciences. And once we know the basics, this is not the only session. Throughout the course, we will talk about the various points which you, are, you can easily relate with this session and you can learn how to better use the language while uh, writing the content for the life sciences or the biomedical sciences. So to start with this, Grammar of school is different from the grammar used practically by the writers. So whatever we have been taught in the school, that grammar is not the same what we are going to talk in this session. You must understand that the grammar, here we talk about the practical aspects. Here we don't want you to learn the grammar. Here we don't expect that we all should know what exactly the abstract noun is there, what the adjective do and all those things. But we are more focused on how the grammar part impacts and how I can use it to make my writing or our writing more effective, more clear. So uh, just through the example, I would just like to give you the analogy. Just think about a dish. Suppose as a cook, you want to prepare a dish, but you are not knowing enough about the ingredients. If you don't know how much, which ingredient is required in which amount, at what time that ingredient should be, uh, should be poured in or at what time that in ingredient should be avoided and how much quantity of each ingredient is required to prepare the dish, you cannot make a delicious dish out of that. In the similar way, when you are writing something or you are preparing a document, grammar is just like your ingredients. And if these ingredients you're not familiar with and you don't know how, how much to put, which ingredient, how much, where the particular ingredient has to be avoided, which ingredient is important, which ingredients can be eliminated, which ingredient can be converted into other those things, if you don't know about the grammar, which are the actually the ingredients of your document or your writing, you won't be able to prepare a delicious intellectual dish that the reader wants to read about. So with this analogy, I just want to give you uh, the thought that don't think that grammar is something only a school student should know. A grammar is something which anybody who is playing with the language, anybody who is writing something, Grammar is one of the important part that we need to understand. But with what perspective that we are going to share in this course, and uh, that will be totally different from what we have studied in the school days. So when writing, a, when writing, a writer actually is playing with the words. Actually, you are playing with the ingredients. And those words, the, the more beautifully you play with those words, the more beautifully you use those ingredients, the more strong and effective and clear your message will be to your readers. And that is what the goal of writing is as we are from the day one talking about the same. 
then what in grammar a writer must know to make the biomedical writing effective now we must know the grammar but what kind of a grammar or what part or what what the things we need to know about the grammar that is very important and what are those of course as i told you that it's not about the definitions which we have learned in school it's not about the rules then where you have to put was is am will had been has been all those rules you have already studied in your schools and colleges and we all are well familiar with those and not the, even the restrictions because in school days we used to study that some of the things in grammars we cannot do some things so here not to use the noun here not to use this here not to do this here don't place commas all those restrictions are also not very important for, as a writer because they also change from culture to culture even from audience to audience even from subjects to subject some of the things are not allowed in life sciences writing but those things are allowed by the fashion industry so we as a writer it's not important that you know all the definitions rules restrictions or tenses all these you already know well to the level that is required in writing we all have learned enough of these things in our school time in our college days if some of you are from the english background and you have studied uh, uh, you are teaching to the english students you must be knowing all these things so these are not the part of what we are going to discuss in this course about the grammar we are going to discuss something beyond this assuming that you all know all the basic things about what the noun is what the verb is what the adverb is i i i consider i assume that you people have the basic knowledge of the same but how that knowledge can further be elaborated to find out the way to make your writing part effective and more clear and more uh, persuasive for the readers so the writers use the grammar to assess to evaluate and to improve their writing and this all the things you are assessing you are evaluating or you are improving their you are you want to improve your writing why you want to do that because to suit the need of their readers and to subject now you know grammar but how that grammar should be used in your life sciences or the biomedical writing if you are if you know that particular uh, thing is a noun and particular thing is a verb but depending on your readers how you can throw those words how you can convert those words into the use so that it will be helpful for your readers and it will suit the subject of your interest that is the main focus of learning the grammar part through this course then we all learned in school that there are eight parts of speech and these are the eight ingredients we talk about uh, when we talk in english we 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 talk about the english language we have eight parts of parts of uh, speech and that is that is the type of words or the ingredients which are found in our writing any kind of a sentence or a paragraph you pick up from anywhere in the world written in english you will find that these eight types of words exist in that and what are they how they are going to make your uh, writing effective and where they they should be used <coughs> and how they they should be adjusted to make your writing effective that is what the writer should no while using these words now i would like you as a writer just note down this this is the table given where i have categorized not i have categorized i have also taken it from uh, some of the good writers who have explained these concepts that there are two class of words when we talk about uh, while writing for any kind of a writing but here we are talking about the biomedical writing so there are two classes of words one is the open classes and second one is the closed classes open class words are actually the content words whenever you write something your main content is about four type type of words noun verb adjective and adverb these four type of words are going to contribute to the main content or the main message of your writing then comes the closed classes and these closed classes are not the main word they are the functional words functional means their role is to relate the content words open classes with each other we'll see in details for the time being just note down that the noun verb adjective and adverb these are the four 
uh, open classes words and uh, pronoun preposition conjunction and determiner these are the four closed classes you don't need to remember the definitions you don't need to uh, tell me the uh, tell uh, think about the examples you will naturally you will identify when you will read something about life sciences you can easily identify and we will deal with the uh, examples of the same to make it more clear for the time being just keep in mind there are two class of words one is open classes and second one is the closed classes now talking about the open class words these are the four types noun verbs adjectives and adverb now open class words are content words as i already told they they contain the main message of your uh, writing and they carry your core message in writing means if you know these open class you actually know the core message although you don't know how that message or how those these words are attached to each other but they'll tell you what we are talking about who is doing the action who is receiving the action what the action is you can easily assess by looking into these four ingredients of open class words then whenever the language grows new words comes to every language similarly english also gets added new words every year the dictionary gets updated so whenever the new words come they are mostly added to these open classes either more nouns come either more verb comes adjectives come adverbs come these are the classes which actually grows your language so language actually grows on these words and their form changes with reader and context the beauty is that these are the ingredients nouns verbs adjective adverbs their form and their uh, their usage and usage with the uh, verbs usage with the noun or the nouns usage with the adjective they change their forms and the same word can be converted into verb can be converted into noun it can be used as an adjective which which you can easily see i will we will talk about uh, through the example also that they can be they are interconvertible they are the main ingredients of any sentence or any paragraph and varying their quantity and quality changes the readability clarity accuracy and precision of your writing readability clarity accuracy precision in the first session we have discussed that these are some of the qualities of a good writing especially when we talk about biomedical sciences or the life sciences and you can easily as a writer you can easily change the quantity and quality that we can i'll, I'll show you I'll, i'll discuss with you even i'll give you some exercise maybe in the few in the uh, future sessions where you can easily see that how you can change the quantity and quality of these both these uh, of these words by knowing them how to use them and how many to use them which should be the which should be the more, more major ingredient of your uh writing and which should be the least used in your life sciences because life sciences as i told that it is a precise science it is a niche area you cannot always say very big you know here the very big very is you are adding very without any kind of a measure to it so that is that falls under these classes of words only and you can easily increase the quantity and quality of these uh open class words as a writer and you can make your writing more effective persuasive and clear for the readers then next comes the closed classes of words these are also again the four types one is pronoun preposition conjunctions determiners you all know the basic definition just like pronoun is some something which is used to replace your noun like if you want if you are taking the name of something then you can say as a, as a if the person is male you use he she him or all these are pronouns and similarly you have the prepositions conjunctions to join the sentences so this is the basic but here we want to know that closed class of words are the supporting and the functional words they themselves actually they don't have any meaning their job is to integrate the sentence into a single entity they integrate the nouns and the other uh, open class words together to form a strong sentence that can deliver the message which you want to give to your readers and then close class of words relate open class of words and complete the sentence to make them more meaningful uh, for your reader 
then new words are rarely or never added to this class. So we, we as a writer, we should know that nobody is going to add more pronoun or preposition, conjunction. If you see even your uh, dictionaries, these class of words are rarely added. Very few you will find compared to the open classes. So they rarely add to the growth of words in English language. So then their use can confuse or misguide your reader if not placed thoughtfully. Sometimes in these sentence, you can see where these close words are used, that their position in a sentence can confuse the reader. And as a writer, your job is to understand that what is the exact place, where should I place the pronoun? And we will check that in the future sessions that how this can be done. So this is just the basic that by, by knowing that these two classes of words are there and how they work and how, how a, a writer uses them, it will become easier for you to understand those techniques and how to improve the writing when you are writing for life sciences. Though their use can confuse and misguide, as I told that they are the secondary ingredients of any sentence or a paragraph. And by varying their quantity and quality changes, it, it changes the length of your sentence, it changes the meaning, and it adds ambiguity in relation to other words. Sometimes your he, she, of, about, they change the meaning in relation to each other uh, if you read your sentences. When open words are used properly, if you are using the right form of an open word, then these closed classes automatically adjust each other to make uh, the uh, to make your better the meaning of your writing better and writer knows how to remove and convert them to use the better word as a writer you can easily uh, find out the ways how you can remove those or how you can avoid their usage or how you can make them better placed in a sentence so that your writing is more powerful and uh, readable for the uh, readers then how to combine with the noun and the verb, etc., to remove them to enhance meaning by reducing the number of words. Although these are the functional words, but if you reduce them, it actually reduces the clutter from your writing. Clutter means that the, those words which are not adding any meaning, but they are existing in your writing. Any single word, if you are writing, which can be removed is a clutter. So when you are removing those words, most of the time, these functional words can be reduced very easily by a writer if he knows he or she knows that how these can be converted into other forms when they are used with the open class of words so now let's understand this by example now read the sentence below and uh, you'll see that open class words which gives the core meaning is our holding reading book will rapidly explain enjoyment usefulness grammar of it. So you are no, you can easily see that this is about the reading book. Open class words, you can easily check that uh, we are talking about the reading book. Then uh, we know that we are talking about the enjoyment, usefulness of the grammar that that grammar offers. Then the closed classes are you and I, which the and that. These, these are not making any sense. But if you, if you combine these two words together and create a sentence, then you can see that how they both are combined together and you are holding and reading a book which will rapidly explain the enjoyment and usefulness that grammar offers. So these are the two classes of words which are joined together. And you can see the entire sentence now has a meaning. It has uh, uh, the, 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 the relation of uh, all the open class words with the closed uh, classes and with the each other can be easily fixed up by using these two classes of words. So this is how now you understand that what are the two classes as a writer, which are the two classes of words we have in the language and how important and what is the role of them in expressing your thoughts in writing. Then same word can change the form and writer knows how to make the best use. In, the, in grammar, when you as a writer is looking at the grammar, your job is to look at uh, the, what kind of a role the particular word is playing in a sentence. See these small, simple sentences that hand me the patient's report. In this, you are handing something, handing over the patient's report and report is acting as a noun here. Whereas 
and we must report to the doctor and here the report is acting as a verb a report when you are handing me or a doctor to the the patient's report you are handing over something which is a noun which is a thing or a place or a something and when you are doing something when you are reporting to the doctor it is acting as a verb so the same word but it has two different forms and which form to be used where and how you can convert one form to the other that forms one of the important things as a writer which uh, we we must know and use this tact to make our writing better then if we see noun and verb are they are the heart of any sentence if you know this then you can use them strongly effectively and by this you can remove many of the other words functional words from your writing and more make your sentences more direct more punchy and more uh, clear to your readers then words can change form as i told then check the sentence now for the words read the first sentence that here we measured the weight of the agent drug dissolved it at the level of 0.5 microgram per liter in saline and then it was sorted at stored at 0 degree celsius for a period of 10 days now this is a 34 word sentence and then we have converted the same into the other form where number 1 we measured the weight we have converted these four words into we weight you can see we measured the weight we have reduced measured the we have removed and we converted into we weight so four words we have converted into two but the meaning of the sentence remains same then comes second number two in the green color you can see dissolved it at the level of 0.5 microgram per liter in saline this can be converted into dissolved at 0.5 microgram per liter in saline so dissolved at can be placed in place of dissolved it at the level of at a level of all these level is abstract noun and to add that abstract noun you need a functional words at a of and these can be easily removed by just two words by saying dissolved at then comes in blue the third the third uh, phrase and then it was stored at this can be converted into and stored at so then it was you can see that you can easily remove these words to convert it into and stored at only three words from six you have made it to three words and then for a period of 10 days a period of period is you are talking about period is a noun abstract noun and you need a and of to present that and a period of can be replaced only by by writing for 10 days and this sentence now becomes 18 words long so from 34 words we have made the sentence almost 40 to 45% shorter you can just imagine if you are writing one page it will become almost if you are writing 10 pages your content will become of almost 6 pages if you are doing this kind of a cutting or the clutter and removing these words from your writing so this is how the knowledge of grammar and the ingredients you can use to make your writing more effective and clear i hope this sentence this uh, particular example has helped you out a lot and uh, you can choose more sentences you can easily read your own written words and you can easily find out where you can reduce the number of words by just identifying uh, and removing Uh, the words and replacing them with the more effective and uh, more economical use of uh, various word classes we will do the further exercises in the coming sessions which will give you more clarity about the same thing then is then grammar for a biomedical writer is not about right or wrong here i'm not going to say that uh, your grammar is wrong now if you go to the previous slide that the first sentence is not grammatically wrong the only problem is it has more number of words and it has made your sentence more convoluted more confusing and not direct for the reader so here we are not talking about the right and wrong the 
the, the reason why we are discussing the grammar here is to see whether we are effective or we are unclear in our writing. If we are effective, we want to be effective writers. We don't, as a, if you say writing anything is a writer, no. If you are not effective, if you, are, you cannot say your uh, message in lesser words with the best impact, that is what we expect by learning the grammar part as a writer. So uh, with this, uh, we have the basics uh, in this session covered and we will definitely go further and we'll see how the noun, how the voice, how the verb, all these things can be used by the writer and how they can be helpful in making the sentences. Then we will check out that how those sentences can convert it into paragraphs, what kind of a paragraphs you can con make when we, especially when we talk about life sciences and then how those paragraphs should be uh, uh, attached or they, they, they should be linked with each other to, to make a, uh, an effective piece of writing so that your reader will find you interesting to read and to discuss your subject. So I hope you got a, a, a kind of a idea that what kind of a grammar a writer should know and that is quite different from what we have learned in our schools as a grammar student. Thank you so much with this. And uh, you can easily, if, if you have any doubt or anything, uh, no worries, you can contact us anytime. You can send your questions on our uh, portal. And uh, in case something is left, we will be covering everything. So do not worry about that we have not discussed this or we have left out that. We'll definitely cover everything which is required to become a good writer for the biomedical or the licenses subjects. And uh, you will definitely get more and more tips and tricks and even the tools that how you can write better. Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. See you again in the next session.